Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. Tonight, we are in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. We're going to be going to the murder site of supposedly the last ever hit that John Gotti ordered before he was sent off to prison. Sammy the Bull put together a whole crew to get this done. Very crazy scenario. Let's flip this around and get into it. Okay, the address that we're going to is 1337 83rd Street. I made a mistake, it's not technically in Bensonhurst, it's in Diker Heights, it's a block away from Bensonhurst, kill me. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Mooney Dashcam. There is a crime scene photo in this video that I will not be able to put on YouTube, so check out my Instagram post when this video is up, and you'll see that. Also, don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments, I very much appreciate that, I got a lot of inspiration from that. Lastly, hit the notification bell so you guys can see exactly when I post a brand new video. All right, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. Eddie Garofola, 49 years old, a Gambino associate. He has three children. I would give you his nickname, but there's a racial slur in it. There's two Eddie Garofolas. This is not the one that is Sammy the Bull's brother-in-law. He does come up later in the story. I'll differentiate the two. All right, so Eddie's construction company demolishes buildings in Manhattan, non-union jobs. It was like an illegal thing going on. The whole time while he's doing this, he's dumping garbage and toxic waste into a property in Staten Island. You're obviously not supposed to just dump toxic waste. There's a way to go about it. They didn't go about it right. This is all in 1985. He's doing this along with Fred Weiss. Check the link in my description. I have a whole video on Fred Weiss and what happened to him because of all this. Then in 1987, April 6th, he gets indicted along with 16 other people and 11 other trucking companies for racketeering and conspiracy to bribe three North Bergen, New Jersey city officials. Around the same time, the government starts cracking down on the toxic waste dumping that they were doing. That, plus many other problems that he caused for the Gambino family, they were kind of fed up with him. Him and Fred. On top of them being fed up with him, Fred and him both were big money makers and they had very good lawyers. When the mafia appoints anybody a lawyer or people that are involved have a lawyer, they usually have what's called a stand-up lawyer who doesn't represent anybody that would cooperate. They both drop their big-time lawyers and pick up these weird small-time lawyers. It doesn't make much sense to anybody, but it puts everyone's antennas up. They're, they're suspicious now. These guys are cooperating. So this makes John Gotti want Fred Weiss dead, which he has done. It's a very complicated, convoluted story also. Like I said, check that video out. Then after that, even Sammy trying to stop John Gotti from having this happen, talking to him any which way he can, John Gotti eventually puts his foot down and goes, no, I want this guy murdered. Because... Sammy the Bull's brother-in-law, same name, Eddie Garofola, is Eddie's, Eddie Garofola's first cousin. Uh, spelled, the last name just spelled differently, but pronounced the same, as far as I understand. So Sammy puts together a hit team on John's orders and gives them all instructions. We're very close to the spot, you know, I'm going to stop right here. Like I said, it said that this is the last hit that John Gotti was ever able to order before getting put away and going to prison. So, the team that Sammy puts together, I'm going to close the door, is Daniel Fama, the son of Joseph Fama, who was a heroin dealer for the Gambino crime family, made a lot of money. If I don't already have a video out on him, I'm going to shortly, depending on when I decide to put these out. He's the driver. Frankie the Fap Fapiano and Little Joe D'Angelo are the shooters in this situation. 
Then Thomas Huck Carbonaro drove the crash car, and Sammy's brother-in-law, Eddie Garofolo, was supposed to block the road like a dummy, like, ooh, my car stalled if the cops ended up coming by. This right here is the address. 1337. So you can imagine one of these doors right here. He'd have to come out. And this all goes down in the middle of the street here. Whoa, hello, focus. There we go. Okay. So, it's August 8th, 1990. It's a Wednesday. 10.30 p.m. They're all totally set up for this plan to go smoothly. Of course, someone's parking right in front of my car, which makes a dog bark. But, so they call him to lure him out of the house. Sammy the Bull says a guy named Johnny Gamarano makes the call to get Eddie Garofola out of the house. That's what Sammy said. And then I read an article that the police said that Sammy's brother-in-law, Eddie Garofola, made the phone call to get him out of the house. Either or, doesn't make much of a difference. He walks out of the house with a woman, and as he gets into the street to get into his car, he gets gunned down. The two shooters hop out, and they end his life right there in the middle of the street. He gets shot multiple times behind the ear, in the back, and in the torso. The woman did not get hurt. I believe, from what I've checked, I believe he was killed just about here in the street. Like about right here. If you look in the crime scene photo on my Instagram, you'll see, let me show you what makes me think this. You'll see this pillar. I would assume this house was here at the time. This house looks newer, of course. You see this pillar. Oh, hello, how are you? Of course. I have a YouTube channel. I f there was a murder that happened here a long time ago. So I'm just doing a story on the murder. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Have a good night. Uh, Mooney dash cam. <coughs> Mooney, M-O-O-N-E-Y. My no last name. Yeah. No problem. <coughs> okay, so this pillar right here is in the photo. And this is in the photo. This, uh... Right now, it's a no parking sign. I don't know what it was back then, but they usually don't move these kinds of things. So, you see the back of the Cadillac in the picture and the body pretty much right here in the middle of the road. Very crazy. I'll add the picture in. I'm gonna heavily censor it on YouTube. we have got the uncensored version on Instagram. Right after that, the shooters run, jump into a dark brown car, and they take off. That's according to witnesses. Sammy is sitting in a car, waiting and watching as this all goes down. Say hi to the truck and don't forget it. Thomas Huck follows behind them as they pull off, just like he's supposed to, because he's the crash car. The crash car is somebody to crash into a police car if anything happens, if the police start chasing. Which, there's always a crash car, but they never seem to have to use it. I guess you have it just in case. I've never heard of a story where it's actually been used. Very quick after check as the story heats up. Can't forget it. It's part of its channel now. Back in the truck. Okay, you can imagine. They just commit the murder, hop in the car, zoom down the street. Right at the end of the street is a red light. Now... Thomas Huck Carbonaro is right behind them. Right at the end of this block is supposed to be Sammy the Bull's brother-in-law, Eddie. That's supposed to follow them and pretend like his car stalled right here. As the shooter's car goes through this light, makes a right, the light just turns red. They just end up blowing a red light. As a cop comes down this road. Look at that, a cop's right there. That's pretty crazy. Come on, guys. You can't make this stuff up. So they come down the road. The cousin, the brother-in-law, Eddie, is not there. 
So Thomas Hook sees the cop, sees that the shooter's car is going to get stopped. He full-on floors it, blows the red light. Skirts away. The cop sees him, does a U-turn, chases him down the road. This is all to get the heat off of the shooter's car. He turns onto 87th right here. He could have made a left, could have made a right. We're not really sure. Now he's flooring it. He's like trying to get away from the police just to draw attention away. As he's doing that, the shooter's car darts down another road. The cops have no idea what happened. So you can imagine getting pulled over. He decides he's gonna stop. So he pulls over right here. Not exactly right here, but somewhere on this road. And the cops walk up and they're pissed off. Oh, were you trying to run? We saw you blow that red light and now you're taking off on us. He's like, no, I didn't try and run. What are you talking about? I, I pulled over right when I saw the lights. You know, some BS story. They write him the ticket. As they're writing him the ticket, they get a call that a shooting just happened. Maybe they know it's a murder, maybe not, but either way, shots fired, they gotta shoot over there. They give him the ticket and they shoot away. Now, the fact that Eddie, Sammy's brother-in-law, wasn't there, his nickname is Cousin Eddie, the fact that he wasn't there almost got him killed. Sammy and his crew almost killed him that night. If you watch Sammy's video about it, it's pretty interesting. Of course, stuff like this falls apart. Later on, Frankie Fapp and Little Joey, the shooters, cooperate. Um, Gambino soldier Thomas Huck ends up getting, getting 70 years for this crime and many others in 2004. Another Gambino soldier, Cousin Eddie, got 30 years, September 5th, 2007, for his involvement. He said he didn't want to be there because he didn't want to be involved in killing his cousin. It was his first cousin. Understandably, but that's not how the mob works. They tell you to kill someone, you kill them. Now, Daniel Fama. After doing 17 years for racketeering, April 4th, 2013, 23 years later, he gets indicted on this case. A year after that, it was dropped. The reason why his charges were dropped is because Sammy the Bull's testimony actually contradicted the reason why they arrested him all these years later. Because they arrested him for witness tampering, but Sammy the Bull said that they had no idea why they were going to kill this guy, Eddie Garofalo. If they knew why, then it would be witness tampering, but they had no idea. They were just told to kill this guy, and they went and killed him. They... They used that because they didn't want to use a regular murder charge because for some reason, this is how I read it, it seems a little off to me, but they couldn't use a regular murder charge because the federal statute of limitations, for some reason, it wouldn't have worked out for this case. So he ended up doing uh, no time for this murder and Eddie Garofola's daughter was confused the whole time. She's like, why? is this guy out on the street still when two of the shooters in the incident both testified and said he was there? How, how is it possible he's out? Which I don't understand either now. Yeah, we got a train going over right now. Oh, I didn't even address the fact that the neighbor stopped me. She was a nice lady. She was out walking her dog, just concerned why I'm filming on her street that you could see is a very not busy street, especially at this time. There's a school on the street. So, you know, you talk to like a normal person, like you should. Gets you out of most problems. You talk with a little bit of confidence and, and some politeness. Goes a long way. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next one.